Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 12, and today we're talking about the harmonic engine. So on the top left-hand side, let's select these lines, new preset, engine one, select wavetable, and let's go to harmonic. So what we're looking at here is this graph, and this is gonna be where we're gonna be looking at most of the time in this engine. From left to right is gonna be pitch, from top to bottom is going to be panning and also volume, kind of. So we'll see that in a little bit here. So as we hit a note here, let's turn this down so we don't hurt our ears we're greeted with a saw wave. And that's because all these individual white lines are representations of sine waves that are at higher pitch and higher pitch and higher pitch and so on and so forth, and they eventually build a saw wave. So all sound can be broken down into sine waves at its very fundamental concept. So right here in this partial view, this 128 means that there's 128 lines and each line is a sine wave. So we have 128 sine waves. And we can drag this down and reduce that all the way to just one, and we can see it's a sine wave. We can hear it and we can see it in the oscilloscope and there's one fundamental tone right here, this is a sine wave. But as we start adding another one, we see the waveform changes and we see another harmonic getting introduced right here. And as we increase this, you guessed it, more of them come in. And at some point we lose the tonality of these individual sine waves and we just start hearing the buzzy saw wave. Now in this menu here, we can choose 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, which is default, 256, and 512. So keep in mind that the more harmonics or partials that you use, the more CPU intensive this patch will become. So if you have a lot of modulation, effects, so on and so forth, your song going on with a lot of other stuff, and you're, you're seeing, thinking this synth is bogging you down, maybe reduce your partial limit just a little bit, maybe 64, so on, something like that to kind of help out your uh, computer a little bit. On the right hand side is the volume for the partials, not the volume for the engine, which is located above here, which we've talked about before. So as you notice here, let's turn this down just a little bit here and let's go back to 128 and bring this up all the way back up. We can see here in this graph and the spectrum view that the higher frequencies start to become less loud. So they're gonna, they're gonna become quieter as they get higher in pitch. And that's what this knob tilt over here does. It's default at minus 0.2. And as we change that to about zero, it turns up the higher frequencies and over here on the spectrum view, it looks like they're just about almost the same volume. There's little variances, sure, but it's not gonna be the default back here where they're significantly quieter at the higher frequencies. So you can definitely change that here. And then the offset is gonna be where that ramp down takes place. So if we have something like this, we can change the offset and we can kind of see right here now is where it is. And we can kind of move that to see where that ratio starts. Very interesting. So double clicking these back to default, above these two is gonna be parity. So hovering the mouse over, it says 50% odd, 50% even, which is the saw wave, all the harmonics in the harmonic series. However, we can change that. If we want a square wave, we can simply turn this to the left, have only odd harmonics. And we have a square wave, which is what a square wave is. It's the only the odd harmonics in the harmonic series. And then to the right, you can choose all the evens. Pretty cool. Over here to the imaging section here, on default it comes as split and there's odd and even and these correspond to the odd and even harmonics, just kind of like what we were looking at here. But now we have the ability to pan them. So we can pan the odds to the left and the evens to the right. Very interesting. Moving on from split, we have random, and take a look at what happens here. So we're holding down a note, we increase this depth, and we can see it kind of changes these harmonics here from the left and right, and as we move the rate, we can start to see them move. And the higher the rate, the faster that they're gonna move. And the higher the depth, as you guessed it, the more left and right. It has a, kinda, has a really almost sci-fi overtone at the top end. We can probably even hear that if we added a filter here. And so yeah, the multi is fine. Let's go over here to the high pass. Something kind of like that. Anyway, moving on, we have this smooth button here. So this is gonna be smoothing the, smoothing the partials or harmonics transitioning in volume. basically smoothing them out if you have something fast going on and it's kind of too jerky maybe in enable smooth it might help you out a little bit 
Moving on from the imaging, we also have periodic. So this is kind of grabbing the different partials or harmonics in clusters and then moving them. So if we have zero periods and we increase our depth, we kind of see we have one, two, and three about. There's one at the top end, there's a middle one, and the low end. However, if we increase the periods, we're going to get more of these. Very interesting. Moving on from this, this is probably the coolest section of this whole harmonic engine, is this middle spot right here. So we have two filters. On the left here, we have a high pass, and on the right, we have a low pass. And in the center, we have two different filter choices that we can morph in between. So for example, we can select this first one here. And let's go to bipulse right here. And then for the one on the right, let's select a notch. Now, this line here, we don't see any change because we have to put the depth in. So this is kind of, imagine this shape being pushed down and that's kind of what that's happening. So you can almost have a mix completely at 100% and it's just gonna represent one of these filters, or you can kind of maybe have a little bit less so it's kind of mixed in there. And this morph knob right now is 100% on spectrum A, which is this first one on the left. And if we turn it to the right, it's going to go just the one on the right, which is going to be spectrum B. Now we can morph and kind of crossfade these two different spectrums, these two, these two shapes. We can have a 50-50, so both of these are going to be 50% 50, 50 influenced on our sound. Now on the left-hand side, we have section, and this is going to determine where, where it's blue is what, where it's going to be, I guess, pushing down on our sound. If we push it too far, then it's not going to affect any certain spots. So if this is all the way to the right, we can kind of see it's maybe touching a little bit of the low end, but really nothing else of the signal. And we can see that reflected on the partials as well. Now, it's very interesting, too. If we kind of mix these a little bit, maybe 70, something like that, put on our filters here so we just have this center stuff to focus with. And let's turn this up here. and kind of maybe kind of play around with the section, kind of find a certain cool sound. And turn the depth all the way up, or pretty close to it. You can make interesting sci-fi type of sounds here. Which works with the FM here as well. And it's a very cool sound. One thing we do not have in this engine is unison, which I've wanted for a long time, but I don't know if that's coming. Maybe it's too CPU heavy. I'm not exactly sure why that's not included. However, if we dive into the effects, we can kind of cheat it if we use a little bit of chorus. Maybe add some reverb to make a kind of interesting sound here. Add some distortion. We're gonna go over all these effects a little bit later on here. So that's basically the first version of this harmonic engine. Later on, we're gonna dive into the window because there's a lot of interesting stuff here that we have to go over and I feel like a separate video for these might be a little bit better to go through these in depth. So try to play around with the harmonic engine. You're probably gonna fall in love, but at the end of the day, it's a little bit CPU taxing. So make sure you're kind of watching how many partials that you use. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.